So time and time again, I have talked about my fascination with World War II related books. And of course, We Were the Lucky Ones by Georgia Hunter is no exception. I received a, um, advan an advanced reader copy of this book through Goodreads giveaway, and I just finished it. I absolutely loved it, and I can't wait to talk about it because I was so captured by this story, and I cried so much, and it was so good. We Were the Lucky Ones came out February 14th of this year, and um, it's really a sentimental journey. It follows three generations of a family of Polish Jews um, torn apart by World War II. We Were the Lucky Ones is based on the members of Hunter's actual real-life family, and she's able to interview these members of her fa some members of her family about you know, this time period and the war and just, you know, the things that have happened afterwards. It's awesome to see, you know, kind of how she pulled all of her research together to create this book because in this book we're living through the experiences of Kirk and Nishuma Kirk. I, I think it's Kirk. It might be spelled, pronounced differently because um, it's Polish, but it's K-U-R-C. My mind pronounces it Kirk. And Saul and Ishuma have five children and they live in the city of Radom in Poland. Shortly after the war begins, the Kirk family loses their home and their business and they're sent to live in a small apartment that eventually becomes one of two Jewish ghettos in Radom. Uh, luckily, most of the family is kind of near each other throughout the story. But when their family members and extended family members and friends start disappearing, they obviously begin to wonder if they will even make it through the war alive, let alone together. And surviving this war can only be accomplished if one is able to lie, steal, hide, and forge their way to safety. So at the beginning of the war, the eldest Kirk child, Genek, G-E-N-E-K, and his wife, Herta, moved to nearby Lvov, uh, but they are kidnapped and sent to a work camp in Siberia. Daughter Mila and her daughter Felicia must support themselves when Mila's doctor husband, Selim, disappears. Middle child, Addie, is living in Paris as an engineer, working as an engineer when the war breaks out. He serves in the Polish branch of the French army, but eventually realizes that they're starting to target Jews and he's a Jew, so he needs to get out of Europe. And so he travels to South America on an illegal visa. Jacob and his girlfriend, Bella, move to Lvov as well to live near Ginnick and Bella's sister, Anna. They eventually get married in secret the youngest daughter, Helena, stays in Rodam with her parents and sister Mila until fear and living in the Jewish ghetto becomes too much for her and she moves to Lvov as well. Her fiancé is in Lvov and he is a key player in the Polish resistance for his ability to forge documents. And Adam and Helena also get married in secret and Adam is awesome and kind of, and he makes documents for the Kirk family, stating that they are Aryans and they're not Jews, um, just in case they ever need them to kind of escape and get out of, and so they don't have to, if they ever needed to go into hiding and things like that. So I was really baffled by the lengths Mila went to hide Felicia from the German soldiers in the ghetto and of course, you know, Mila is Felicia's mom and she just wanted to protect Felicia from being killed because everybody was just being killed, especially young children. And so everything that Mila did was just to silly save Felicia's life every day. Every day she had to do something that would save Felicia. I was really amazed by the resilience of this family um, because they had just wanted to survive despite starvation and terror and fear. And, of course, not to spoil anything, but I was relieved when the remaining family members at the end of the war were able to find each other after six years apart. It was such a relief 
and at the end of the book, um, Georgia Hunter has a little author's note that that describes um, that describes her you know her relationship with her grandfather who is one of the Kirk children. I'm not going to tell you which one, and just kind of how she never knew about his history because he didn't talk about it. She thought he was just a regular old American guy, and um, you know. Her, Upon his death, her grandmother, uh, her grandfather's wife, I'm not telling you which one was her family member, um, after he died, the grandmother opened up and kind of told Georgia about what her grandfather had been through. And, and Georgia just kind of gives us a summary of kind of the family in present day and kind of how she went through all of her research to create this story. And that's pretty much all I can say without really spoiling the book, but it was so amazing and heart-wrenching and powerful, and I completely recommend it. Five stars, A+, plus, one of my favorite books of the year, definitely one of my favorite books about World War II now, and yeah, go check it out. It's, it's out and about. Go buy this book and read it. It's amazing. <laughs> Thanks for watching and have a great day.